So welcome back to the third installment of the Storm of Zahir Let's Play. We're back at the shipwreck where we first landed uh, after having been to town, arrested, and uh, sent back out to do some figuring out of exactly what happened and also to recover some of the cargo. Uh, there's not really a whole lot to do here, um, just, and we will be back later again. Technically, for recovering cargo uh, quest, that's all you have to do, um, but you do want to pick up all this stuff because you need the, the trade goods in order to uh, get things done. And here we have an enemy, and we're just going to let the archers kill it, or not. Now, most non-human enemies, when you kill them, will drop something, in this case, a dinosaur claw, which is a an item that can be used... Some of them can be used for crafting. Some of them you can just sell. This one you actually need for a later quest as well, so hang on to the dinosaur claws. I'm actually going to cast some buffs before we get going here, so I'll be right... Okay, here we go. So... When I'm actually in areas where I'm fighting, I'll tend to drive around as the tank, because I want the tank up front, and all of the archers to sort of stay back. There's some advantage to uh, having everybody close together so that the bard bonus applies, but it's more important to keep everybody alive. Ouch. I'm actually going to disable the spell casting just to make sure that the AI doesn't waste any spells that I need. So to do that, you go into the behavior here and you go into all of this. And I'm just going to hit everything off all. I thought I had turned everything off, but there they are casting spells again, so... And you can just leave all of this on if you want to let the AI do it. The AI isn't extremely stupid, but it's very often you cast spells that you really would rather have saved for something more important. So... I'll heal up and be right back. Okay, and back into the action. Pretty easy, but not tr not too easy. So here's a Zalantar spear. Um, if you've played the original campaign, you'll remember that they have a, a minor damage bonus. I'm actually not going to bother cleaning this stuff up. I'll do that off screen at the end of the video. And since no one has died, uh, everyone is gaining levels simultaneously, which is, I guess, useful. But uh, I'm going to do all the leveling up off screen. So I'm going to stop here. This is one of the items we need for our investigation. 
So I'm going to clean up all the stuff, gain some levels, and then be right back. Okay, we're back. So this broken weapon is considered one of the clues. Um, so again, it shows that you know different characters address things differently. Uh, for some reason, the fighter knows things about weapons, so it doesn't. Everybody else has to poke the stick with a stick, or if you have weapon crafting skill, you can use that. The next clue is the rigging, and in this case, again, it seems like bards know about ropes. Um, and so do rogues, apparently, or maybe it's just a function of lore skill, but they have something in there that, in their skills or in their, their description, that makes it so that they are um, capable of doing that. And the last clue is this corpse here. And for this you need either a cleric or a favored soul or somebody with heal skill. All of which we have. Um, but There's apparently one more piece of evidence. One sec, let me look at my notes. Ah, right, the ship's hull. And for this you need either craft alchemy or um, Druid actually will do it for you as well. Note that this character doesn't actually have any craft alchemy skill, he just has it from intelligence bonus. So it shows you don't really need really high skills to get this done. The only skills you need to have at really high in order to get things done are spellcraft, which is needed for an option, a late game optional dungeon, um, and you know hide and move silently just so you can get around on the map. Everything else is not super important. Obviously, uh, having good concentration and tumble and all those other things are good for just making effective characters. But as far as campaign specific skills. So, back to the map. And I think I will probably end up showing a, just a random fight, uh, but if I don't see anything, I guess maybe I won't. Instead of going directly back to town, I'm actually going to head to a different location just so I can sell things off. Otherwise you would have to go running in a couple circles to get things done. Now these random items that show up on the map are all a function of your skills, except for these gravestones, which allow you to dig up a grave and pick up a ring of fortitude, which is a really kind of bad item. I don't know why they bothered, but it's there. So here we have our second city, Rastan. Now all these other cities have um, somebody in their tavern who will give you a side quest. Uh, in this particular case, I'm not going to bother with it just yet. But I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is trade with Rastan, and that brings up this, and it brings up another tutorial. But essentially, the party here we have eight ore and two timber, and you can sell them, and they give you trade bars, which are essentially a second form of currency. Uh, I don't know really why they bothered with not making it just GP, since there's a constant exchange rate, but that's what it is. You have to have trade bars to do things, and generally if it involves the trading system, um, it uses trade bars, and if it involves anything else, it uses money. Though there are some things like establishing trade routes on the later map uses money. So I'm going to cut the video short here, and... Um, meet you back in Samargol for the, the next installment.